Hello guys and welcome back for a new uh, restoration video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the G.I. Joe Troubleshooter. Uh, this vehicle I picked up uh, about a month or so ago. And uh, I've been sourcing parts for it. So I'll show you what I'm working with here. So this is the Troubleshooter. Uh, it is uh, very dirty. You know, it's not a big deal. We're going to be cleaning this up. That'll be one of the first things we're going to do. Uh, you can see the condition of it. It's definitely uh, can use a bath, but the main body of it is in pretty good shape. Uh, a lot of the stickers are also still pretty good shape too, uh, but not all of them. So some is going to need some attention. So we'll definitely uh, be addressing that. The actual mechanism, this is how I received it, uh, does not work. Uh, the wiring is a bit janky and looks like it's been tampered with. So I'm going to attempt to get this running again. And uh, then we'll go over the parts I picked up. But for now, Let's just go ahead and get this uh, old troubleshooter uh, cleaned up. Okay, so the uh, troubleshooter is been washed. Uh, it's definitely going to be some more work to be done here. Uh, so the plastic is pretty, I mean it's clean, but it's a little bit dull. Uh, and there's also some stuff on here that did not come off. So I'm going to see if I can get some of these black marks off. I'm uh, going to use a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol on a q-tip so just some basic rubbing alcohol q-tip go to for tougher stuff to clean you know that's starting to break right through there Alright, so the sticker placement on this is way off center. So this is going to go as well. I'll show you as we go along. Did pick up the replacement sticker sheet from Cotts World Collectibles. So we will be able to replace these. Okay, so I've washed it, cleaned it, I've used alcohol to remove the bad stickers and the black marks off it. So we're in pretty good shape right now. Uh, the plastic is still pretty dull and there's a lot of scratches in it. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Nova system. I'm not going to go into a full detail look at this. I've shown this many times on my channel on my helicopter, on the ATV, a uh, bunch of videos. So it is a three-part system. 
Part three is the heavy scratch remover. You rub it on, you wipe it off, then you do the fine scratch remover. Same thing, rub it on, rub it off, and then finish it off with clean and shine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started doing that. Okay, so I've run part three and part two over this just so you can see how it's coming along now. Uh, definitely made a big improvement already in the plastic, the color, and a little bit of luster. And I'll just finish it off with uh, part one, which is clean and shine. Okay, so clean and shine is done, and you can take a look at the new finish. So definitely looks a lot nicer. There's a nice luster to it. Really makes a big difference, that stuff. Really like it. I was able to save the original troubleshooter sticker, uh, but the other ones will definitely be putting on. But what a difference that has made. Very happy with that. Okay, now with the troubleshooter all cleaned up and polished, I'm going to... Uh, put on the uh, replacement stickers uh, where they didn't survive which is pretty much everywhere except for here so I picked up the Cotsworld collectibles troubleshooter replacement sticker decal kit so it comes with everything needed to do that uh, I'm not going to need all of these uh, also uh, the troubleshooter mechanism itself has a sticker which I'm going to leave that alone that's in fine shape as well as the one on the back of it but we do have some crucial decals to replace like the headlights tail lights and control center so let's go ahead and get started with that okay so uh, this is the sticker sheet and I went to 3d vintage shows.com and it shows this as the headlights um, doesn't show these at all uh, so I'm just gonna make my own choice on what I think will look better for uh, the headlights I think I'm gonna go with these uh, more traditional ones for the uh, for the headlights so let's do that There we go. I think that looks pretty good actually. I like that. pretty sharp too all right so now it's time for the control panel Alright, 
coming along nicely. Alright, so I think we're in pretty good shape now. So the main body is clean, polished. Uh, stickers are on. I think this is looking great so far. So, now that this is done and out of the way, we'll go ahead and turn our attention to the actual SATCOM set. So, we'll start taking a look at what we got to do here and what's missing. Okay, so this here is the SATCOM or satellite communication device that comes with the troubleshooter and this is the condition I received it in. I did uh, just wipe it down to clean it up a bit, uh, but this is what I received. Uh, it also has the battery cover, but uh, the wiring, as you can see, is a little bit, uh, it's been tampered with and basically it looks like it's been worked on at one point. This is uh, intended to be right here. Um, and this is the adjustment to make it slow or fast. Um, so I just got to figure out where these wires go. I'm not a wiring expert. Uh, electrical is not my strong suit, but I think I can figure out what to do here. Basically, I think the red wire is going to go to this spot right here. Uh, that'll have to be uh, soldered back in. And I believe this uh, blue should be attached to the uh, the battery cable. It's the, the, the maybe the spring. So it doesn't have the spring. I did just uh, sacrifice a uh, old flashlight for its spring, uh, the battery flashlight. So it is a perfect fit for the uh, troubleshooter. So that's gonna work out real good there. So I'll have a spring. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and tinker with this. And if I'm successful, you'll hear it work. If not, I'll attach the parts that I've uh, secured for this and we'll call it a day. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and solder. So you can see this looks like it was soldered at one point, broke, and it was also uh, hot glued to keep it in place. So I wanted to see if I could uh, just re-solder this back on here. Is it working? I'm recording right now. Okay, so I've been tinkering with this thing for a couple of hours, and uh, I think I might be getting somewhere. So I've got the wires uh, kind of just pre-set up, and I went out and I bought a new batteries, because uh, I wasn't really sure if the D battery I had was any good. So I just bought some Rayovax, wasn't having any luck, started tapping on it and it finally got some motion so let's see what we're getting here all right so it's got this device here which makes it go talk faster or slower so let's adjust that and see if it makes a difference
Well, at least it's progress. It is working. I'm going to keep tinkering and see if I can get it to actually talk clearly. All right, as I continue to play with it, I'm getting somewhere. <laughs> I'm loving this. Okay, so now let's uh, get into some parts that I've picked up to complete the troubleshooter. So, uh, one of the things I picked up was from eBay. It's uh, Curry's Closet. Uh, it is the 3D printed windshield so that's uh, pretty simple that just tabs in and then it also has the uh, the rotating drop down windshield so windshield is done 3d printed part uh, of course we'd always love to have the originals but got to work with what you got and I think uh, think that works really well I really like how the plastic came out so far so aside from that let's take a look at the actual uh, troubleshooter satcom set so with that uh, kindly Eric and Mike uh, on Facebook so Eric L and Mike B sent me some parts to help complete this set. A lot of these parts are really hard to find, so I really appreciate it guys for sending them out. Thank you very much. You've made this restoration possible. So Eric sent me the solar uh, panel kit. So really cool. One of the really one of the most hard hardest parts to find. Uh, for the uh, troubleshooter so that will install right over here so now it has its solar array um, next up is the actual radar dish so as you would uh, well this plugs in here and I'll show you what that's about so there's this little knob here And that rotates that, but it also, if you notice, rotates the picture so you get the signal and then you press. The corresponding thing you need to adjust the uh, speed on that. So it is working as you can see, but moving on from the uh, radar dish, we also got a couple of the antennas that are needed for this. So that's these guys here. These are vintage, so I'm not sure which one goes where, but it's going to pop those in. So now I have those. And finally, the actual antenna for the unit, which plugs in right here. So now, uh, it is nearly 100%. There's actually one piece I believe I am missing which is a control panel that slides into there. Uh, don't have that, but I think I got enough to uh, say we're pretty close and to make a video. Because if I wait to try and get every piece, uh, and especially one of the things that would have came with the fate of the troubleshooter is the vulture. And that is also a really, really hard piece to get. Um, but anyway, thank you very much, uh, Eric and Mike. For sending out these parts again you've made this possible thanks very much so 
So I've got it to work. Uh, it does talk a little slow. I played around with the adjuster on there for a while. Probably could play around a little longer and shore up the connections, but you can hear it. It is slow. So the idea is you would uh, tune to the picture and then press it. Uh, it does play all the phrases. I have gotten it to do that, but it's not reliable. Radio your position, help is on the way. It's radioactive, send a mobile support. Radio your position, help is on the way. GI Joe in danger. I found the mummy's tomb, send the ATV. Radio your position helps on the way. Uh, there's another one that it did say at one point, which is uh, emergency at Spy Island, but in any event, I'm really glad to have gotten it running. Uh, may not be perfect, but for a toy this old, 1974, uh, can't complain. I'm really just happy that I was able to make that work. That wasn't really a tutorial on how to repair the actual box because I didn't know what I was doing. So why should I tell you what to do? I just tinkered with it until I could get it to work. There is a really cool tutorial. I'll leave a dis uh, link in the description below from Richard's Toy Room, which is one of the ones I referenced as I worked on my troubleshooter. Okay, and a quick aside on this, uh, my last video I did show pickups and my uh, idea for the uh, McMillan Jungle Survival Kit. Uh, so this is what I did. I just added a couple of little things, which is the Snake Bite Kit, Jungle Survival Kit, which I thought was fitting, and a snare to catch snakes or animals. So. That's kind of the concept I got going on for uh, my 1975 Muscle Body G.I. Joe. That's the uniform I went with. I think it looks pretty cool, uh, especially with the uh, green boots. I think it just goes with that whole look. Alright, so the troubleshooter is back in action. Uh, it's going to go on new adventures. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, taking a look at the restoration of this vehicle just want to give you a brief tour visually on how it turned out you can see the reflection in that plastic I can't recommend that Novus enough really happy with the way this came out uh, it's uh, not a hundred percent complete but it is pretty close really happy that it even works just a really cool vehicle one I really didn't expect to get into my collection these can be pricey I was lucky enough to get this uh, also a thank you to uh, Robert for uh, selling this to me hitting me up let me know if I even wanted it and giving me an excellent deal so with the help of the community, the Facebook groups, uh, the G.I. Joe Adventure Team and G.I. Joe in general uh, can still stay in action. 
As always, guys, thanks for watching, subscribing, and commenting. Until next time.